Good morning, peeps. It is the first day of November, 10 a.m. This is Nick McPhee. This is the Unhindered by Coding live stream, uh, continuing again on this fine morning. Um, at least it's sunny and pleasant here. Um, the sun will probably come around and shine in my face, and I will have to move the curtains later, but we're good for now. Um... So we're going to return to the question of how to get uh, the ice repos thing to log in. So I, I say return to. We're really going to start today. I think, so let me back up. I feel like on Saturday we really got the bulk of the repository management nonsense resolved. There are some things I could clean up there. I've got some notes on some things that I would like to do something with. Um, if I have time and enthusiasm at some point. But I think that basically that stuff works. And rather than continue to be bogged down in details there, I feel like I've got to sort of address the elephant in the room and begin to think about the problem of authenticating to GitHub. And this has been a worry, a source of anxiety, a, um, an issue that I sort of knew I was gonna have to deal with, but also knew I didn't really know how I was gonna deal with it uh, since early in the process. And I've been kind of putting it off and I feel like I'm just going to have to suck it up today, and we're going to have to start it. And the problem fundamentally is that I had hoped that this whole ICE repos thing could live in GitHub pages. And uh, you wouldn't need to... Um, have, I wouldn't need to have any server infrastructure at all. Because it seemed like, in theory, that ought to be a possibility. I mean, it's just as going to, in some sense, GitHub acts as the th server. We're going to get some information from GitHub about some repositories. We're going to make some decisions about which ones to archive. And then we're going to send those decisions to GitHub. And GitHub is to archive them for, for us. And it didn't seem like we really were going to need any server infrastructure. And that was going to be nifty, because then I could just deploy this on GitHub pages. Everybody could use it. I wouldn't have to worry about server stuff or paying for any hosting or any of that sort of nonsense. Hello, is it too? We would just be able to like post this thing. Everybody could use it. Life would be swell. But it turns out that doesn't work. And the problem is when you uh, authenticate to GitHub, and it sounds like this is, you know, for most services these days. Um, and I hope you're feeling better, by the way, is it too? Um, I guess it's been sort of a weekish since you mentioned that you were uh, struggling with the COVIDs. So I hope that things are improving. Um, when you authenticate, you have to provide... Actually, let's go to the... Uh, let's go here. Here? Here. Yes, here. Um, so this is the key sequence of events. So um, when you request... When the user wants to log in, so you'll have a little login box and they can type in their name. Um or just a login button and you don't even have to have their name. You're gonna make a request like this. So your client's gonna make a request like this. And it has to have a client ID. Okay, that's well. And it needs to have a redirect URI. Um, you can actually specify that when you create the app and when you authorize the app in GitHub, but somewhere you have to say where uh, the users will be sent after uh, authorization. And this is where it gets complicated because this is expected to be, 
I mean, you have to have a server there, right? That's a URL, URI, that GitHub is going to make a request to. Um, well, that's too bad. Um, I'm glad, I mean, it's, I'm glad you're feeling better, um, but it's a bummer that you had to call off some weekend plans. I understand how that is can be a stinky deal. Um, but I hope you continue to improve. Um, so the, um, the GitHub server is going to make a request to this URI and somebody has to be there listening. And that's where we have a problem because, um, if we're just hosting GitHub pages, there is nobody, there's no server on our end. There's no service, uh, listening at that URI to receive that request. And it's important because uh, your app needs to get these user access tokens and then provide them when they make API requests, authenticated API requests. Um, this is further complicated by the fact that as far as I can tell, and I should be very clear here, I am in no way an expert on security, on authentication, on GitHub API stuff. I mean, I, I am out at the edges of my understanding of the world uh, in so many ways here. Um, uh, and I'm sure there are people in the room who know more about at least pieces of this than I do, um, if not all of them, uh, all of it than I do. Um, which is awesome and I appreciate everybody's feedback and, and suggestions. Um, but these tokens, I'd also had this thought that somehow you'd log in, our, so we'd have some little tiny server component out on the web, um, out in the cloud, whatever. But, and it would do, it would provide this URI that um, GitHub would come back to and then we get this token and we just send this token to the client. And then from then on, it's just the client. Client talks to GitHub, our little server thing doesn't have to be there anymore. Well, I don't think that's a good idea either. Um, from what I've read, those access tokens aren't supposed to leave the server that got them. Um, you're not supposed to send them to the client. And the problem is that they're, um, they're a secure thing. And once they're in the client, you don't have any, you don't, it's hard to control the security. Um, once they're in the client, there are too many ways they can be accessed. Um, and so you're actually not supposed to send them back to the client, which means my little server is going to have to live longer than I thought it was. Well, um, it's going to have to do more than I thought it was. I think, in fact, every um, authenticated client request is going to have to go through our little server to GitHub and not directly to GitHub like I had hoped. And that's a minor bummer. I mean, it's not the end of the world because I think it was Zizitsu who suggested um, a, a nice way that we might resolve this but i was still like oh but that's not really what i wanted to do um and so it's kind of annoying um so we're gonna need some kind of server infrastructure and so that's really the beginning of today is to sort of build begin to build um that server infrastructure and then figure out how to connect it up to the um client that we have and so the proposal over on Discord um, weeks ago, months ago maybe, was to use Cloudflare workers. So Cloudflare workers, um, let's see if we go here, um, are pretty nifty. Um, they're kind of like AWS Lambdas, so they're little serverless pieces of functionality. Um, that you can spin up in a variety of languages, including Rust. So we can do a Cloudflare worker entirely in Rust, so we can keep our app all Rustified. Um, uh, the free plan 
um, should give me more than enough resource. Um, so I I'll be, should be able to handle 100,000 requests per day. Uh, that's a lot of requests. Even if I have to uh, make every request to GitHub through the worker, I think we'll be okay. I mean, I think we're looking at sort of one request to log in. We're looking at a request to get a request for each page of a repository. Let's assume, let's say that's four just to round up. I mean, actually on any of mine, it's two, um, but that gives us five. And then a request for every repository you want to archive Let's assume again, because we want to round a lot, that that's 95. And, and we'll, we, well, let's see. We could, I don't know. Um, uh, so it says here, sub requests are not billed on a unit basis. So we could actually send one request at the end with a list of all the repo IDs that we want to archive. Uh, so we could do this whole thing in single digit requests for a, a given repository. And let's round up and say 10 requests for a repository. That means we can handle uh, 10,000 um, organizations, sorry, single digit requests for an organization. We can handle 10,000 organizations a day I'm clear. I don't have anywhere close to 10,000 organizations to, you know, to do all of mine would be far less than that. So unless a lot of people take an interest in this, and I just don't see that being very likely, the free tier should be way more than enough for the meantime. And I have to make sure, well, actually this, oh, this 10 milliseconds per invocation, hadn't thought about that. That might require that we not send all the repos in one request because I'm not sure we would be able to archive all. So let's say there's something like 50 to 100 repositories. I don't know that we'd be able to archive all of them in 10 milliseconds. Um, and so we might have to make separate requests. Um, uh, I'm even going to make a note about that. Uh, oh, stop it. Um, wah, wah, wah. Oh, come on, behave. Might need to make separate requests for each archive, repo to archive um, since the Cloudflare free plan is limited to 10 milliseconds per invocation. And since those invocations are going to make requests to GitHub and get responses back, I don't know if we would be able to get all of them done in 10 milliseconds. Maybe we could, I don't know. Um, but even if we can't, if we assume 100 requests per organization, we're still able to do 1,000 organizations a day, and uh, it seems like that should be plenty, at least for now. Um, so we'll go with that um, and see where we end up. So... Free plan should hopefully do the thing. Um, and so we can write some a little bit of Rust code um, that will act as our server. Um, and I think here is an example. Let's see, it's come back up to, do I care? Yeah, I mean, we can look at this as an example. So, um, this is uh, a sample of um, how this works. So you end up with a main that, and you have to import all their worker stuff. 
um, and you have a main and the main gets handed a request and an environment and a context and it then acts on that in some way and one of the key pieces and this would look familiar if you've used express or um sinatra or any of a number of similar things um flask i think is the python one um, um but you have a router um and you can provide um http requests um and then bits of logic that you want to happen when those requests occur. So um, this shouldn't be too bad, fingers crossed. We'll see, there's a whole lot of detail that we're gonna have to sort out, but you know, I'm hopeful that we can uh, make this uh, like actually work. So that's the plan. We're gonna flail into this and it's probably gonna be a lot of hard flailing. I'm giving you fair warning that um, this is well outside of my um, area of experience and so there's probably going to be a whole lot of flopping around like a dead fish and if that scares you feel free to go do something else with your tuesday morning and i apologize but i've got to go through this so through it we go so i've created one of the things that um the little confusing well confusing um a complication here is um, there's a lot of um, client secrets and stuff like that floating around, and so I'm gonna have to like make sure I manage this so that I'm not like putting these on the internet um, for eternity. Um, and if I do, then I'll have to make sure I kind of rebuild that one um, after the stream's over. Um, but I think I'm kind of uh, ready for that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so this is a sample project. There is a thing called Wrangler um, in um, Cloudflare land. That's a CLI tool that you can use to generate projects and do other stuff. So this was created with Wrangler um, as a sample Rust project. So you actually have a Wrangler.toml file as well as the cargo.toml file. The Wrangler.toml file has some information um, about uh, the project, um, and that's all swell. Uh, and I don't think we'll need to worry about any of that, but um, I don't know. It could come up. Um, and then we have the code. Um, so uh, main thing here is like. Said we've got a request, an environment, a context, and we return a result uh, which contains a response. And I presume this result thing is something we get from Worker um, since it only has one type here. So they must have a specialized result that has a, um, a uh, Wrangler. Um, Cloudflare worker error thing cooked into it. Um, and so we're logging the request. Um, this just fiddles the way some output happens if there's an error. Um, and then we have this uh, router that has a get um, that's hello from workers. So we sh it's basically a hello world. Um, and then a post uh, with a form and a field um, and a get worker version. So let's see if we can make this work. Um, so I think I do uh, Wrangler serve. Is that right? I should probably move this over here. Uh, uh, uh so that other people can see what's going on. So no, it was not Wrangler serve. How do I actually spin this thing up? Um, ah, Wrangler dev. So you can, I mean, I could sort of push this to their cloud infrastructure and run it there, but obviously for development pur purposes, you would prefer to 
clean and only push when you got nothing. Um, so now we unloading the pile of gold. Um, these are really done as before. Um, but I made a new version of this and had built the new version. Do 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 do. Come on, go to the computer. Um, <laughs> then this is going to, I don't remember what uh, you, port this is going to serve on. Come on, go faster, little computer. Okay, I'm going to move a curtain here while this is taking its sweet time. Uh, that's better. Sun had come around and I was starting to cook. We have got super warm weather through tomorrow. Um, I think it's going to be in the 70s tomorrow. Um, uh, so, kind of crazy. Um, okay, so we're listening at 8787. Um, actually, let's hit B for open a browser. I assume that's going to open the... Haha, <laughs> look at that! So we got hello from workers. Uh, and worker version should give us something useful. Nope. Worker dash version, I did underscore. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Cool. So we're up and running. We're doing a thing. So then the question is, can we log in to, can we authenticate to GitHub and do something useful? That's, I think, the million dollar question. So... Um, let us create, um, uh, la, 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 la. we are going to want, well, no, I think we could just do, um, I think we could do got get login user ID. Uh, so we'll have a URL, um, if we say slash login, and then after that we provide a user, a GitHub ID, so actually let's call that a GitHub ID. Um, so in my case that would be Nick McPhee, all run together. Uh, then we want something to happen. Um... We probably don't care about the request. We are going to care about the context for reasons which I'll describe in a second. Um, okay. Now we're going to need to make a web request to GitHub at this point. Um, and that's going to need to either i've seen an example here recently um was that here i think no maybe not uh where did i see that Come on, somewhere somebody had. This is the same thing, I think. It was web sys request stuff. So, um, do I have? I wonder, do we have web sys in the project? Um, not sure we do. Um, oh, these can be updated by several versions. That's interesting. Um, 
So, uh, I think that woof, 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 woof. Uh, Rust Wasm Web Sys Request. There we go. So it's web sys is the thing that I want. O three O six. Boo -da -boo -da -boo -da -boo. Dependencies web sys. You know. Oh. Didn't like that. So that was not right. No. Web sis. La 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 rust web sis. Oh here let, let's um lib dot rs web sis. Oh, it's dash. Is that right? Yep. It's dash. That was probably my problem. Do, 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 do. Yep. Just like as it's who said. Web dash this. Okay. Um, and then I can uh bring in oh, go away all you little people um now i can make a request so i can say request and actually let's um what does this look like uh, so Well, that's not helpful. They want me to go here, but that's not going to be a lot of help, I don't expect. Oh, I just want an example of using request. I've done it, but I don't ever remember these things. Rust web sys request example. Uh-huh. Um, is this in the right place? Okay, here we go. So we make a request with the URL and some options. And then we can set headers, which we will need to do actually later. And then at some point we trigger the request. Um, this does it with fat with window.fetch, and I think. Okay, let me open up. Uh, what are you doing? You're weird. Um, let's open up the other ice repos because I know there is a request there. Uh -uh. And that, that's going to be in the later actually. Um, let's make the URL. Let's make it bigger for people. Make the URL. Get. Send. So send just does what we want. Okay. Um, that'll work. Uh, Cool. 
So, oh, I guess let's do this. Steel code. Um, steel that much. Okay. And so we're going to want to log in to GitHub. And that is going to be this URL right here. Um, wah, wah, wah. Oh, I guess we don't actually have to format it. It's just a string. Quote. And need, don't need to get. Boom. Okay. So we're going to make that request. We'll send it. Await and unwrap. Now this is going to fail um, because we are not providing all of the things that we need to provide. Um, uh, now did that just rebuild? Doesn't look like it. Oh no, I guess that's just logging when we made requests. I don't know if that rebuilt or not. Um, so let's see, you're saying I need to redirect users to that URL and then have it redirect back to our worker. Yes, right. So this is the, um, I think this is the get request that the client will probably actually make. I'm putting it here for now just to sort of see if we can get the loop of things to work. But I think you're completely right that this would, um, well, I mean, actually, I think there are two different ways to think about it. One is the client, no, I think you're right. I think the client needs to do it because, um, uh, the client has to redirect to this page. Um, and then we will include the redirect URI, which is currently missing as the way that will come back to our app when we're done. Um, uh, and but for now, I'm actually putting it all in the worker just to sort of see if the loop works. Um, but you're right that this is going to eventually, parts of this have to move to the client. Um, and the redirect is presumably one of those parts because there's no, it doesn't make sense. It's not, not coherent to talk about redirect, redirecting at the server side. Um, so that'll have to happen at the client. And it occurred to me now um when the client redirects um i'm not sure what happens in the browser when the authentication completes there has to be we've got to get back to our app somehow I'm not entirely sure how that happens. Um, yeah. Is that? So that's a, actually, that's a redirect in the browser now that I think about it, right? Because, hmm, I'm not entirely sure. And I don't want to get bogged down in that right now. Let's just st stay in the um, worker space. We'll have to figure out the how do the client and the worker interact in a bit. 
but I'm trying to like keep this one piece at a time since there's so much I don't know. Um, okay. So we're going to have this request. We're going to go ahead and make that request. That's going to fail because we don't have a client ID yet, but I just want to see it happen. Um, now, um, can we, I don't, I feel like I would have said something if it had rebuilt. And I don't know that it did, but I don't know. Let's, um, uh, login. Nick McPhee. Not found. That is not what I was expecting. But I don't know where that came from. Oh, we can get anything down here. So, uh, so maybe it just didn't rebuild. Really? You're not like smart enough to rebuild? That's kind of annoying. Is there... Um, a flag that says watch me um, uh, don't know maybe not that's going to be kind of annoying and now now, presumably, we won't get a not found. Oh, we do get a not found. So that wasn't the issue. What is going on? So we're get slash login slash or colon GitHub ID. Err. And so we, it does log the thing correctly. That's a win. Um, but we're clearly not getting anything useful out of this. Um, So is this console log bang we're in login with github id equals something I'll fill that in a second does this even like print something? That's a good question. Oh, Rust Analyzer doesn't look happy. Oh, good catch. Well, thank you. Um, check the server logs. What is Rust Analyzer? It's failed to load work. What? Failed to read. Cargo metadata from cargo Tomo file. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So there's a version dependency issue? But it builds? Um, cargo build. Oh, so many things have to be compiled.
So that didn't hurt the problem. And Wrangler Dev doesn't indicate that there's a problem. But Rust Analyzer is clearly not happy. Uh, or failed to load workspace. Failed to read cargo metadata from cargo Tomo. Yada, yada, yada. Failed to run. Oh, yeah, let's pull up our cargo tomo. That might be useful. Oh, it's right there. And I feel like this happened after we added WebSys. And it seems to say there's a version Failed to select a version from Wasm Bingen. It's required by worker. So, oops. So we have got, come on. Oh, stop it. Oh, let me look at this. Okay, fine. I can't apparently move the cursor up. But it says that we've got Wasm Bin Gen 283 to satisfy the web sys, but we're only doing 278 to satisfy. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably the right thing to do is to try to update the worker. Um, can I just do that? No, that didn't do what I wanted. Um, I was hoping maybe I could just like click a version. Oh, there we go. That worked. And might as well update you as well while I'm at it. And now it's rest now. Do 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 Just thinking, thinking hard. Probably having to download and compile a bunch of crates again. You can do it, little computer. Come on, stand a lot of work for me. Come on. So I hope everybody had what you consider a fine Halloween last night. Um, we went and hid. Um, we're Halloween Grinches. Um, uh, and turned off all the lights and hid upstairs and watched um, two movies. Um, and I sat with the laptop and attempted to do... Actually, I, I learned... I figured out the... Quick check crate in Rust um, last night while we watched um, and used it to add some tests to the um, segmented file server um, uh, project, um, and that was actually pretty nice. Um, I had flailed for way too long um, at one point um, for reasons which we need not. Well. Yeah, I, I had dependencies and dev dependencies in a cargo.toml confused. Um, and that uh, messed a bunch of stuff up um, until I figured out what the problem was. Uh, but once I did, then it was like, we it worked. Um, and that was cool. Uh, and so I liked it, actually, it was neat. Oh, and not found still. Um, uh, why? Oh, this is red. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Red. That's, hey, good job. It's telling us things. Okay. So we can find out what, what I did wrong. 
So what is the issue? Um, mismatched types. Oh, expected result, but got uh, a unit type, I think. Or, or expected a response. Yeah, so you always have to supposed to have a response at the end. That was my, my problem. Response. Okay. We logged in. Which isn't going to be true, but... Blur. Now we're still unhappy. Why are we still unhappy? Uh, oh, it's capital O. No, it's not capital O. Okay. Why are you... Uh, Yeah, so I think you're right, is it, Sue? It looks like um, the, the pinning is always dangerous business, but and it looks like that may have gotten us messed up. So what? We expected a result, worker response, found an opaque type, impl future output. What? Oh, um, the, so let's see. No, that's there. Response. Okay. And a string. So, hello? What is the deal? Is this this uh, oh so maybe I don't need the async here oh look at you well that could well be the issue <coughs> um doesn't like move. Oh, syntax. Uh, do I need? Yeah, I do. Get. So it doesn't take a move here. Oh, so maybe that's also the problem. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, right. The response is async. Hmm. So maybe this needs to be like a get async. Because they have this post underscore async. Oh, look, there is a get async. And so then we can probably say async here. Oh, look at that. And it does not yell. Uh, now the get is fussy. Why is the get fussy? Really? That came straight from here. I wonder if this is a different type request. Uh, what request is this? This is going to be... Oh, a requasm request, not a websys request. So what options do we have here? we make a request oh and then we set things on it that doesn't seem as nice that doesn't seem as nice at all um, so what 
Looks like maybe Requasm would be nice. Yeah, so provides idiomatic rust bindings for the WebSys, Fetch, and WebSocket API. So that would be a nice thing to have, and we don't have it. So that's going to require... Adding Requasm, which we don't have. Um, and the suggestion is to use GlueNet instead. Rust GlueNet. Oh, actually, I wanted probably the next one, didn't I? So that looks like it's basically the same thing. And so what's the advantage of the one over the other? I mean, I don't care. I don't think I know enough to... I guess we would want... So Requasm is really just a wrapper around GlueNet and re-exports everything? Uh, okay, well, I'm down for GlueNet. So we need to add GlueNet 024. Wada 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 wada. GlueNet. Now, can I add a dependency through this somehow? Um, not sure what that looks like. GlueNet equals and you think it would be 024 and ah that matches good job okay so we have glue net now um aha gotcha that's actually good to know so we are getting a newer version of GlueNet. So, so that's cool. Um, oh, and then I wanted... Uh, oh, and I need the feature, the HTTP feature, which we do not have. Currently pulled, I don't think. And so it's version equal... Feature equal... Eight. Is that the syntax, I think? Yes. Haha. -ha. Be nice if that like gave you a list of the features. I think it would. Um then we ought to so we'll get rid of this. And now, if we say request, why are you being fussy? Okay. You should build, right? No, something's unhappy. Um, oh, it needs a thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, actually, let's just get rid of the for now. Now build? Not building. Why not building? Um, set panic cook. Mod utils. File not found. What do you mean file not found? It's right there. Oh, it isn't right there. I could have sworn... That was right there a little bit ago. That's weird. Um, well, let's, we'll fix that in a second. Let's just get rid of these two things. I just want to get, see if we can get this thing to build. Okay, that, that all compiles. Now, 
we ought to be able to that response equals request got get oh it's colon colon get right colon colon get yeah so are you not pulling the you're getting worker request. Oh, of course. It would need to be a worker request. All this business about glue and everything is wrong here because this is going to have to happen in worker land. Um, so we need to actually find worker request. Oh, poop. Yeah. Um, because this is going to happen in a worker. Um, so that is the incoming request and I don't think you can actually use it well it will move to the client later and it won't be part of this but for now I would like I don't think there's any reason that the the worker can't make this request Actually, can't, is that going to be true? Maybe that's not true. Um, so, do you think we really that? So, I've I've been like doing this game where I was going to have the worker pretend to be the client, and are you saying you don't think that actually is going to work? That this isn't going to that what we're doing only really makes sense if we're in a browser for this part which could be true. I'm willing to actually believe that that might be true. Which would be annoying. Hmm. And so... Yeah. Because the next step, so you can come here, will be to make this post request here. So we could hack the post request, I guess. So maybe what I do here is for now to try, because I'm trying to keep the number of moving parts to a minimum. And I'd rather not have to be thinking about the client and the server at the same time. So I could try to hack the post request and just have it see if it can log in as me um, using this post request. So maybe that would be the thing to do. And we'll pretend the... Um, uh, oh, but we'll have to have done this we will have to have visited um, GitHub or this isn't going to make sense. Uh, and we're going to... Yeah, because we'll get a code back from step one and we'll have to pass that code. So if we don't have... Um, if we don't have if we haven't done step one we're not going to have the code to do the thing um, and so that code is going to have to be passed to the server and then the server will make that post request to get the access token. But But if the code comes to the client 
then yeah I guess I'm not clear on is this URL no sorry is this redirect URL redirect URI here is this okay so the redirect URI is the worker, not the client. Can't be the client. So the browser will get a URI. It will load that URI. That URI is going to be, it's got to go somewhere. It can't be to ICE repos because we don't have a server running there that's doing interesting things. Well, but you could, because we are writing, we're writing a piece of software there. But you're saying, is it so that the redirect URI is the worker? So it should be a URI that the worker responds to. And then that would give the worker this code and the worker trades the code in for an access token. And then we go from there. Um, okay. And then the worker has the access token and it then makes all the requests um, to the API. And that prevents the code and the token, for example, from living on the client or, um, yeah, from living on the client where you don't have to have control of things. Okay. So we do need to have, <coughs> um, uh, enough browser to make this request, which I can just do in Thunder whatever um, in, so actually let's set that up. Oops, I want this. So let's imagine, oh, no, not stop, go away. Let's use, what's this guy? Thunder client, yay. Um, make a new request. So we're gonna, go there and it's a get request and we can make a whole bunch of pieces here um, so we're gonna need the redirect URI which is gonna be this oops uh, and that's going to be not query parameters. We need hang on. parameters. So what are these? How are these being sent? through the, because <clears throat> the get request doesn't have a body. Um, so through query parameters? Oh, so there is a thing here for OAuth. That's interesting. Is this, oh, this is pretending. I think this lets Thunder, what is it? Thunder client to pretend you have a token, which isn't what we want to do here. We want to actually go get a real token. Um, I 
I think. Um, so, so maybe you're right. Maybe I just need to do this. Oops, let's do this one. So I can do that, that part. And it will be like, do this. Um, and hello. Uh, oh yeah. So it wants me to verify. Oops, no, not you. But I'm me. Da, 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 da. Come on. Sure. Da, 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 da. Approve. Okay. Here. And we failed. So we tried coming back to here because we didn't, that request didn't have the, and the problem was that request didn't have the, um, the client ID and the redirect URI and that stuff in it. So, the, so I guess these are all query params. That seems weird though, that you put the client ID in a query param. I'm going to guess it could be a thing, but, um, so yeah, I guess it could just be all, um, client ID, and we're going to need a redirect URI, and we could actually have a login, and I don't know, let's put one of these little state guys in for fun. Probably ought to actually probably care about scopes too. Um, uh, because we probably want to limit the scope. Um, and then we'll have to put some values in here. Um, oh. So if I put the client ID here, everybody's going to see it. And there's just not a good way to get around that. That's weird. Because the client ID is actually... Okay, I'm confused. Because the client ID is secret. Because they don't even show it to you. If you go to... Uh, do I have that? Uh, oh no, it isn't. The client secret is secret. The client ID is apparently public. Okay. Ignore that. Um, so the client ID would be that. The redirect URI would be this. login would be me the state was just going to be a random string um, and this is clearly not random and then the scope be good to understand scopes a little bit um, uh, so I want the scope to be um, right, no, need right public key, none of that stuff, none of that stuff, none of that stuff. So I think 
it's going to be repo I guess it's just going to be repo because I don't see a repo something else that's going to give us a sub thing okay So what's the form? A spaced limited list of scopes. Okay. Um, so I think we can just say repo. Repo. Oh, and I bet I need quotes around that guy. And I probably want quotes around this just in case I were to add another scope. So then that gives me this. And in theory, now we try this and we see what we get. Whoa, cannot connect to the server. What have I done? Oh, we're still trying to go locally. That's weird. Why are we trying to go locally? Oh, that's just the, I wonder if that's just because the client didn't respond. Um, and do we think we need quotes around the other pieces? Probably, actually around the URL, I bet we do can't hurt so let's just quote up the world here but it's possible it died because it did redirect and then 87 87 wasn't up or there wasn't a thing to receive that although the 404 came from github so that seems weird um okay so let's try this um So we get a 404 from GitHub. Why? Is there any... Hmm. <clears throat> so we tried going here. And that was the URL, right? Log authorize. Login OAuth authorize. Login OAuth authorize. Okay. And is the the thing is running? But and there's nothing in the log. To indicate that somebody tried to talk to our thing. Um, what? A, so we can try that. Oh, actually, why is this? Oh, that's because we are respond. Oh, well, I wonder if the fact that our thing may not be running successfully is part of the problem. Safari can't open up. Oh. Why are we? Ah. Redirect URI mismatch. Oh, it must match. Oh, so here's the problem. 
when you set up, uh, when you register an app with um, GitHub, you provide the callback URI in the setup and they have to match. And what I had was 8080 instead of um, blah, 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 whatever we were using here. Um, well, instead of 8787. So I think I need to make these match. So copy this, put it in the thing, update application. Okay, now let's try it. Wada, wada, wada. Oh, I want to grab all of this. Go. <gasps> oh, that's better. Um, so ICE repos would like to additional permission on repositories. Uh, read and write all public and private repository data. That seems like what we want. Um, and I think we're okay on that front. So I'll say authorize. And I will be redirected to 00008787, which seems correct. Now this will fail because um we got a 404 which makes sense because we don't have a yeah we tried to get this code and this state um so that was the request made but we don't have uh something to receive that whoa go away go away go away Okay, well that's 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 a thing. I can live with that. Um, so that means we want this to not. We really don't want this at all. This is just not going to be a thing. But we do want um, to support this post request. Oh no, that's the post request we're going to make. We actually provide the URL. So we need actually, we need our U, U, URI string to actually go to someplace. Um, uh, right now it just goes to slash, and that's not going to be good. So we need to have um something like uh dot get probably async because we have to make a request um, um like finalize login and it's gonna probably care about the request in the context maybe not I don't know for sure if it'll care about the request but so all that's gonna disappear so we're gonna get a request um, Yes. So maybe that is that if that was what you meant by give it a path, I think that if that's true, I agree with you 100%. I don't think I understood that when I first saw it, but yeah, if that's what that means, then yes, we need some kind of path. Um which means I'm going to need to change my um finalize login. I need to update my GitHub thing. Um, so GitHub knows that that's the um, redirect, and then this is going to need to be slash finalize login. Um, 
Now, what does this get? Um, so we have a code and a parameter, a state parameter, if we provided a state. Um, well, that's interesting. So that request came from the client. So the client had to have the state, but then the server, the worker gets the callback with the state, which means that the client and the server have to have had some kind of conversation to share that state before this gets done. Interesting. I'll make a note of that. Um, the client and serve worker need to have a shared state value if I'm going to use that in the um, OAuth sequence with GitHub. And it makes sense to use that, um, but it does mean that we'll have to have some kind of sharing happen between them. Okay, so then we'll have code and state. Um, so lib um, so that means that the request um, so actually I think the request has the parameters we want and the context may never get used um, so let's put a response okay we logged in so it'll be happy and not grumpy grumpy now let's actually get the um, code comes from the request dot um, oh none of that oh ctx dot oh param is in the context it looks like okay fine ctx dot query probably just param um, code and let state ctx param state uh, and we'll say console um, log we got, oops, we got code and state from GitHub. Boom, 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 ba da ba da ba. Okay. Did not like that. Oh, those are, oh, those are options. Well, let's just unwrap for now. Um, actually, can we question mark? And will it do a useful thing? No. No. Router doesn't. Uh, we don't have the right kind of thing, probably. Oh, because we're turning... Oh, this is in an async. Okay, fine. We'll just do an option or unwrap. Dot unwrap. Fine, fine, fine. Whoa, not happy. Made it bad. Oh, because we haven't, is it because we haven't done anything async -y? Async block may outlive the current function. Oh, so we gotta have a move. 
async move. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that wouldn't have changed this, right? I think this is still, question mark still fails. Yeah. Because we're inside the async, so it doesn't know how to do that. So in theory, that might work. So if we grab our request and we say, boom, and it tried to go to finalize login, but it, oh, because I don't think it reruns things. Well, that's so weird that it doesn't recompile things. Okay, now we'll try it again. No, was not happy. Get, finalize login, code and state. What have I done? Do I just typo somewhere? Finalize login. Hello. What is going on here? So it's up and running, but for some reason, finalize login is generating a 404. Get slash finalize login with stuff in it. Blar. Get finalize login stuff in it. That is really weird. I don't understand. Uh, uh, this is not some weird spelling mistake, right? So this is what, that's the same. And we ought to be able to test this just from the browser because We ought to be able to just get rid of all that stuff and we get not found. That works. Finalize login. What? That makes. Yeah, it may, maybe that's the issue. I thought. Maybe it didn't rebuild. So, uh, no, uh, Thank you. 
Well, we need a cargo plane. Presumably that'll force it to recompile the whole world. That's going. I need to look. Um, Cloud Flare Wrangler Dev Rebuild. There is a build. It doesn't say anything about rebuilding um, automatically. Um, oh, there's a watch deer in the Wrangler Tommel. That could be useful. So this is running now. Let's just try. Still got 404. Let's have a look at the Watch deer. Uh, so that's an option, presumably. Well, it says it's watching right there. Huh. Also, the current working directory. Which would seem to be correct. Um, yeah, so I don't think that's the issue. But then why in the world... Who? Why do we have a arrow through you? Why does this not work? Is the async somehow a problem? Like if we change this to, cause I'm not doing anything async yet. So what if we just do this? Does this magically make it better? Now it doesn't look like it rebuilt anything automatically. So let's start it again. You think the move? Oh. Yeah, it wasn't happy. So I'm not sure we compiled, we actually recompiled anything. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. 
Still. So we're getting the request. But it's. Borking. Don't know why. Get quote worker version. Actually, we could change this to be the response. If we wanted to. Meh. I'll leave that alone for now. I don't think it has anything to do with the problem. <coughs> so dot get thing closure uh, is somehow somehow this could, that can't be causing a problem. That's just all white space as far as the compiler is concerned. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, actually, let me, um, I was going <clears> to, <throat> uh, let's put a change in here. Because I want to make sure that we're actually recompiling things. Because <clears throat> I am beginning to be suspicious that we are not. Okay. Now we are not. That is the old version of that. So somehow we are not recompiling, which is why we're not getting our finalized login. I am in the right directory. Ice repos worker. Yes. Uh, and that is, this is Ice Repos Worker, yes. Uh, so is there something... It's an unused variable. That's totally boring. Uh, So that's the same thing. So is build generated by... Um, so build is made by running dev. And I wonder if cargo clean just removed target but not build. Possible? Boom. Uh, Wrangler Dev. Is this gonna be a little?
Oh. I must say this project has been very educational, but it's also been very frustrating because there's so many moving parts. Um, we didn't rest very well. I'm better on that front, but mm, um, I didn't know React at all. Didn't know you at all. I'm getting a little better on the U front. I'm pretty sure a lot of things that real React programmers would cry about. Now we're having the whole OAuth thing, which I don't have a lot of experience with. <clears throat> um, and Cloudflare workers, which I have zero experience with. Um, there's just an awful lot of new in this project. Okay, so it did build a bunch of stuff. Now, let's see if we go to here. We still have the same old thing. It did not rebuild it. What in the world? I mean, this is somehow, I'm not like in the wrong directory. Year of programming, ice repose worker, source, lib. PWE, year of programming, ice repose worker. Now, why does this not? Oh, I do think somehow, how am I in different directories? Okay, that's worrying a little bit. I close you and I come back to here. Oh, dot. Okay, somehow I was just in the right directory or So this, you may remember the utils were missing earlier and it's clearly there. And uh, so, yes, something. I don't know what happened there. Now, if we say finalize login uh, request context. And actually, let's make this an async because that is where we're headed. And hope that it does the right thing. Um, so let co. Oh, let's actually log console log bang, right? Yeah. We're in finalize login and let code equals ctx dot ctx dot param code and let's state ctx dot param state I don't think so I think actually I really don't know what I'm worried, what I think might have been the case, but then I don't know why VS Code didn't like have a complete cow. Um, is I feel like I may have opened VS Code this morning when I was getting ready for the stream, deleted in the terminal the directory and reinitialized it, and then. VS Code somehow didn't realize that the whole world had gone away. I don't know. I'm really not super clear. Um, oh, yeah, I need to unwrap both of these. 
uh, unwrap, and then response. Okay, we are logged in, and we want console log. Um, the code is code, and the state is state. Boom, bop. Now, why are you grumpy? Oh, good question. It is the wrong one as well. Well spotted. So this we want to update. It's probably not as critical because we're not we're not bringing glue in anymore. Um, but having the latest version would be a good idea. Uh, I'm going to use the worker request, not the glue request. Um, now, why are you grumpy? Why are you grumpy? Console underscore log. I said hot because I was lost in JavaScript. Okay. Um, I I think that I think that we'll get requests from workers. Um, I think there is a request in worker here, and I suspect we need to be using their request, um, and not the glue request. But I'm not sure about that. Um, why are we grumpy here? here and why is it talking about semicolons that would make any sense uh, oh do you think the oh the worker request is the incoming request so we probably do need the glue th you're probably right I bet you're right so if we do glue net um, actually version equals um, features equal HTTP Cargo check failed. That's not good. Um, invalid. Oh, come on. Hop up again. Invalid type string HTTP. Oh, because it's supposed to be a an array. A vector. And that will hopefully make that happy. La 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 la. La 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 la. And then this is stop shouting. Yay! Not sure why it stopped shouting, but I understand that. I don't understand why adding glue glue net really mattered, but whatever. <clears throat> um, we shall not worry about it. But Rust Analyzer seems happy again. <coughs> um, so now all this compiles. And so maybe this is why dev wasn't rebuilding, is it wasn't looking at the right things anyway. Wrangler dev. I'm going to compile a whole bunch of stuff. 
la 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 Come on, you can do it, little computer. Do, 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 do. What time is it? Uh, oh, it's almost the end of the session. Well, this has been one of the... Like, Saturday was so good. Both of those sessions, I got so much. I felt like, oh, how it is. It's just like flail, 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 two hours, and here we are, and not much has really happened. Ah. Um, okay, that's fine. That's good, actually. Okay, so maybe... Um, okay, and, oh, I hadn't changed the name there anyway, so... Finalize login. Hey, hey, hey. So, yeah. And that actually makes sense because the unwraps, this first unwrap presumably failed. Um, and so if we change this to be uh, code equals frogs and state equals geese, then, oh, we still threw an exception. Why did we throw an exception there? Get final login frogs geese. We're in the final uh, final login, panicked at unwrap on a none value. On line thirty-five. So trying to get code didn't work. So this is not how we get. Oh, this is URL parameters. This isn't query parameters. That's my problem. And query parameters would be in the request, I would have thought. Um, so this is not good. And this is also going to be not good. So request, what can we do with a request? Not much. Hmm. Is it in form data? I don't think so. Because this that's the body. Um <sighs> Cloud Flare Workers Request Rust uh, Query Params Query Parameters Query So the request 
has a URL and that has the query parameters in it. Oh, fine. That seems awkward, but we could do that. Uh, so, boom, bop. Don't care about the path name. Uh, and then query params dot. What was it? Uh, get. Get code dot unwrap query params dot get state dot unwrap. Okay. So those are both. Oh, well, that's this isn't happy. Uh, oh, so we got to import use worker URL. Oops, oh, come on. Fine. Oh, but it's actually websys. And we don't have websys imported. Do we need websys or can we get away with worker? Hmm. That's an interesting question. So what is a rec URL returns a URL? I wonder if URL, can we get query with params so it doesn't look like this version of URL does query params that's annoying query pairs maybe so let's try that so let's say actually let's just comment this out because we might come back to it let URL rack dot URL boom ba -doom, ba doom dot unwrap. Why is that a result? That doesn't make a lot of sense. And then query pairs. Pairs. And now, now that's a type parse. Um, let code equals query pairs dot get. Nope, I don't think so. Get doesn't exist. So what can we do with this? I 
doesn't seem like the right thing at all. Find. So we're going to, so this is now an iterator kind of thing. And then we would want to grab the first, probably. And unwrap. And that's going to be the pair of keys and values. No, didn't like that at all. Um, cannot index into a value of type. Oh, it's dot, not bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, compiler. Find didn't like that. I'm gonna have to. Um, wants a function closure, but found up. Uh, oh, poop! This is really ugly. So I'm actually going to have to have a closure that, right, because this is find, where we're going to have pairs and we're going to look for the key. So query pairs is giving us all the pairs. And find is going to say, look for the key that's equal to code. Oh. Yeah, mapping this into something like WebSys URL would certainly be preferable. But let's see if we can make this work. Uh, <coughs> so, um, kv, k equal equal code. Now, is that happier? Aha. And then in theory, the same thing should work for state, but we would have state here. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Why is it unhappy? Cannot borrow. Query pairs is mutable. I don't want it to be mutable. Fine, we can say it's mutable if you really want. So obviously, find provides the ability to mutate in place. So we just say it's mutable. Also annoying. Okay, that all compiles. Now, did that rebuild over here? It's a great question. Hey, look at that. It was rebuilding. Um, detected changes. Restarted server. Um, now, is it actually running? I don't know. Not entirely sure. Hey, hey we are logged in. Uh, we didn't get any console printing, though. And I would have expected console printing. Huh? Why no console printing? seems weird but we could do format bang we are logged in with code and state Oh, query pairs consumes the iterator. And so the second one will be empty. And we would get an error when we unwrap. 
Well, and actually find... Uh, no. Hmm. Oh, the code is frogs and the state is geese. Oh, so the... Oh, the logging's out here. So logging was always happening. I'm a doofus. Yeah. Okay. We did a thing. Um, and it did actually find um, both the code and the state, even though it reused the query pairs twice. Um, so it didn't seem to consume it. They're doing something weird there. Um, but I think I want to do the, your, I think like doing the web sys URL seems to make more sense to me anyway. Um, because then we would just be able to say, get code. That seems a lot cleaner than this fine silliness. Um, so I'm going to see if I can make that work quick. And then I really should wrap wraps up because we've run long and you people may wish to like have lives um so let's go there and then in theory we ought to be able to do this Right. That and this and this comment those two guys out. So in theory, that'll build. Wah, wah, wah. Expected a string, but found a result. Wah, wah, wah. So the request, the URL returns the URL type. And so we need to get the string out of that. I think that must be oh that's a result oh maybe that's the if we just oh and this the question marks not do this doing this any good is it Now can we try to do something that gives us the string Esther? Maybe? Aha. Okay. Oh, this is because that's a result still. So we have to unwrap again, but this is a mess. I have to figure out the error handling here a little better. Um, 
And now everything seems to compile, fingers crossed. Okay, so that's running. So that seems to be getting the right thing. Yay! Okay. So I think that actually does successfully get the query parameters out of the login. I feel like it's not the most efficient way to have done this. Um, but it does seem to be getting the pieces out. Okay, it is 10 after 12. We should wrap this up. Um, I'm going to make a note that I need to um, uh, clean up error handling in finalize login and I mean that's not even like done or doing anything yet but we've got like a ton of unwraps in here um, okay <sighs> Cool. I'm going to quit. That was exhausting. Um, I will commit what we've got. Um, this is clearly going to take a while. Um, depending on the week, I might, there might be an impromptu uh, stream sometime this week. Uh, where I come back to this just because this is going to be so flaily. Um, and I think I want to try to put some time into it if I can, although I've got a ton of other stuff going on. So I don't know if that'll actually happen, but um, it might be that some other random moment will occur. Uh, tomorrow night, 7 to 9 p.m., we will return to... Um, Evolution of Computation. Now, that actually might be more in Closure than in Rust tomorrow night um, because I want to be able to do, now that I think we've got the Lexicase timing problem resolved as best as I think it can be under the circumstances, I want to actually be able to do some timing tests of full runs GA runs in Closure versus full runs in Rust. And I think we've got a pretty reasonable Rust system. Um, and so I want to have a comparable uh, Closure system so I can do meaningful comparisons of times. Um, and we, I've got uh, a start on the Closure code, but I do not have something that's complete enough to do timing studies with. So I, tomorrow night might actually be more closure than Rust. Um, and then, but we'll see. But I think that's probably going to be true. And then Saturday, we'll continue with this in the morning. Um, I think we might be able to finish the um, segmented file system project in the afternoon on Saturday because we're very close to the end on that one. So that will be cool. Um, uh, you're awesome. Thank you all very much. Um, is it too? I hope you continue to feel better. And I will let everybody go and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.